Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today we are going to make a jacket out of this vintage quilt. So you're probably wondering, what's the jacket going to look like that I'm going to create? Well, I've self-drafted a pattern that you can also self-draft. It's going to be very simple. So here is a picture of the jacket that we're going to be making. So it's going to have an overlap in the front, so it's going to be like double-breasted, but there's not going to be any buttons or closures. It's just going to close with a tie at the waist. So it's going to be a very nice casual jacket. And then we're also going to have some pleats at the bust, and we're also going to have some pleats on the skirt of the jacket as well. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is get our pattern ready. So I want you to go ahead and grab a pattern that you have that is just a basic bodice and a basic sleeve, or if you have your own personal sloper set, this is a great time to use it. So I used my personal sloper set, and what I did was I traced out the bodice, and I added three inches to center front. Now, I left my dart here in the front because I'm just going to fold that and pleat that in the jacket so that way I still have some shape in the bust area. So all you're going to do for your front bodice is trace out your front sloper, make sure you have seam allowance on it, and extend the front by three inches. So easy, right? So now for the back, this is also going to be very simple. We just want to go ahead and trace out the back pattern of your sloper and make sure it's a full back. Because of the placement for the quilt, I want to make sure I have a full back pattern piece. I also left my waist darts here because I'm going to be creating pleats with them, not sewing them into darts, because I want to have that movement and shape still in the garment. So now I've got a half inch seam allowance on all the sides and a quarter inch at the neck. So that gives us our front and back bodice pattern for the jacket. We're just tracing out the slopers, very simple. So I think with these quilted jackets, what's really speaking is the quilted fabric. So you want to choose a pattern that's fairly simple so it doesn't get overly complicated and you don't lose the beauty of the quilt that you're using. And now for the sleeve, I'm just using a regular straight sleeve. So I went ahead and used my sloper sleeve. I removed the darts at the elbow, and now I've just got a nice straight sleeve. So there's two more pieces to this pattern, but they're just giant rectangles, so we're going to be measuring them out on the quilt. So the skirt is going to be pleated at the waist with the big quilt squares, and then the collar on it is going to be a giant rectangle. So that about does it for our pattern pieces. So if you don't have a sloper, like I said, you can totally use a basic pattern that you have that has a simple front and back bodice and sleeve. Or go crazy and make it complicated. You choose. So this is the quilt that I'm going to be using today to chop up into a jacket. And I'm so excited to do this because I love this quilt, but it has some damage to it. So I feel like it's kind of seen its day being a quilt, but I can upcycle it into a jacket and wear it all summer in the evening, which I'm super excited about. So this here is called a pinwheel quilt because it has pinwheels on it. I believe this one is from the 1940s according to the fabric scraps that are on it. So let's upcycle it into a jacket. The first thing we're going to need to do is lay it out. So placement on this is going to be everything because it has a very precise pattern on it with the pinwheels. So let's go ahead and lay this out and make sure we place our pattern on it exactly where we want. Now what we want to do is lay our sleeve pattern down on the quilt. So you'll notice that I have folded my pattern in half so I can place these pinwheels very specifically in the center of my sleeve. So make sure you go ahead, fold your pattern, and you're placing everything so it's symmetrical. And then go ahead, let's weight it down, and let's cut it out. Okay, grab your scissors and let's cut it out. We did it, we cut it out. So now, let's check out our pattern placement. How cool is this sleeve going to be? I love this. 
I can definitely imagine this being on the jacket. I love the way the pinwheels are placed at the bottom of the arm and then on the top of the arm up here. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other sleeve. And make sure you flip your pattern over so that way you end up with a right and a left sleeve. Now that we have both of our sleeves cut out, let's lay out our bodice. So I've got my bodice laid out. Again, I folded it in half to make sure where I'm placing the pinwheels, they're going to be symmetrical on the pattern piece. So I went ahead and laid that out. We've weighted it and now I'm gonna cut it out. Now that we have the bodice all cut out, let's take a look at it. Here we go. So this is going to be our back bodice. Now we just need to lay out our two front bodice pieces and we'll have the whole top cut out. Now I have one of the front bodices laid out, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and then I'm gonna flip it over and cut out one more so that way we have a full front bodice right and left side. sure that my bodice ends up symmetrical on both sides. I took my bodice that I had just cut out and I laid it so that right sides are together of the quilt and lined up all the quilting stitching lines so that way I know my pinwheel is going to be in the same place on the right and the left side. So let's go ahead and cut it out. So now it's all cut out, so let's take a look. So here we go. Now we've got our pinwheels for the right and the left side of the front bodice. Next, we need to measure the neck of our pattern because we're going to end up cutting out a giant rectangle collar for it. So what you wanna do is just make sure you measure within the seam allowance. So don't measure the seam allowance on your shoulders. Just measure the remaining amount so that way you end up with the full circumference of your pattern at the neck. So my measurement for this is gonna end up being 18 and three quarters. So what I wanna do is cut a rectangle that is 18 and three quarters long and six inches wide because we're gonna end up folding it down. So this is gonna create the inside and the outside of the collar. So let's go ahead and mark this out on the quilt. So to make our collar, I need to measure 18 and three quarters in length, which I've marked up here. And I decided I'm gonna make my collar four inches wide, so I need to double it and make it eight inches wide. And so that way you have a lining and a self within it. And that's gonna include my seam allowance. So I went ahead and I marked, it's kind of hard to see in the paint, eight inches from the edge. So you can see this rectangle here that I've created. And now I can go ahead and cut that out. And now this shape is going to be our collar when we fold it in half. So the last piece to cut out is the skirt for the jacket. So what I'm gonna do is take these blocks and I'm gonna cut them up and make them into the skirt. So I'm just gonna cut right down the middle lengthwise and that way I'm gonna end up with two really long strips that I'm going to pleat into the waist. So let's go ahead and cut that in half and then we're ready to start sewing. I did it. Now I have two really long strips that are going to become the skirt of my jacket. So let's lay out all of our pieces, take a look, and start sewing. Now you can get an idea of how our jacket is going to look once it's sewn together. Now that we have all the pieces cut out, we're going to go ahead and serge all the way around the edge of everything so it doesn't come unraveled when we wash it. And today I'm going to be using the Husqvarna Viking Amber Air S400.
So I've got all my edges serged on all of the pieces and I've got my sewing machine set up. Today I'm using the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2. So the first step is going to be pleating where those darts were. So we just want to go ahead and mark where the dart legs are and go ahead and pleat those. And you can choose whether you want your pleat to go towards center front or towards the side, depending on the look you're going for. So go ahead and create this pleat to all four darts. Okay, so let's do the other three. Now we have all of our pleats created. Next, what we need to do is sew together the shoulders front to back bodice. So I've got my shoulders lined up and I wanna go ahead and sew a half inch seam allowance. There we go. Now go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side and then go ahead and press it open with your iron. Now we have both of our shoulders sewn up. So let's just press it open and we'll attach the sleeves. Now grab your sleeve and we're gonna put two rows of basting stitches halfway from the armhole all the way to the other side halfway. Remember, they're basting stitches, so no back stitches and no fixing because we're gonna need to ease our sleeve cap into our sleeve hole. Our next row of stitches is going to be a quarter inch away from that last row of stitches you just made. Now that we have two rows of basting stitches, we want to gently pull the two top threads so that way we ever so slightly gather up the sleeve cap. So we want the sleeve cap to create shape. Once you feel like you've created a shape for your sleeve cap at the top of your shoulder, go ahead and we're going to pin it to our bodice. Pinning the sleeve in, I like to pin both ends first, so the right and then the left, and then I pin the very middle of the sleeve to the very top of the shoulder. And then go ahead and disperse your basting stitches and make sure your sleeve is going to fit into your armhole. Now that you have the top of your sleeve set in, you can go ahead and sew it. Regular stitch, make sure you back stitch, and let's go ahead and change back our stitch length to a regular stitch length. Now you can see where we set in the top of the sleeve. You can also go ahead and take out any of the basting stitches that you can see on the outside of your garment. Now go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have both of the sleeve caps sewn in, it's time to go ahead and sew the underarm of the sleeve and the side seam of the bodice together. So go ahead and place your jacket right sides together. And we're going to go ahead and sew from the bottom of the sleeve to the waist. Now when sewing the side seam and the underarm of the sleeve, you definitely wanna make sure you're matching up the seam that's in the armpit, so that way they don't come out uneven. So I like to open up my seams and then line them up and put a pin there. This is going to be a permanent stitch, so make sure you back stitch or fix at the beginning and the end. So our seam is all sewn up, so let's go ahead and turn the side right side up. There we go, now we have a sleeve. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have both of the sleeves sewn up, let's go ahead and sew together the bottom of the jacket. So take your two really, really, really long pieces and put them right sides together and we're gonna go ahead and just sew up one short seam here. And then we're gonna end up with a really long piece that we can pleat or gather into the jacket's waist. So 
And now you should have a really long piece that looks something like this. Once you have your skirt sewn together, what you want to do is pleat it or gather it. This part is completely up to you depending on your quilt and how much fabric you're going to be using for the skirt of your jacket. So I went ahead and I pleated my skirt for my jacket, how I think is fit best. So now we're going to take the skirt and pin it to the top of the jacket. So now I have pinned my pleated waist to my jacket top. So now what we want to do is go ahead and sew a half inch. If you have a machine that has a dual feed, you might want to engage that. Or you could also put on a walking foot because this is going to be really thick. So be careful when you're sewing this. Be careful not to break a needle. We did it! Look at our waist. Now it's time to try it on and see what this looks like. I'm so excited. But then we have to put the collar on. I am loving this so far. I think it is so cute. So now it's time to put the collar on. Now what you want to do is grab your collar. Remember that giant rectangle we cut out? So grab this, find the very center of it, and find the very center of the neck of your jacket. And I want you to pin these two together. And when you sew, we're gonna sew from center back out to the right and then center back and out to the left. So we wanna make sure that this is going to be laying nice and flat and it's not gonna be bunching up all towards one end, especially because this fabric is so thick. So this is gonna guarantee that we're gonna have a nice even lay around the neck with our collar. And when we're sewing this, we're just gonna be doing one layer. Go ahead and pin your collar on. Now your collar should be pinned on. So let's go ahead and sew it up. We have half of the collar sewn. Now we wanna go back to center and start and work our way out to the other end. Now we have our collar sewn on. So you can see the collar on the neckline. So now what we need to do is fold it down so that way it's also finished on the inside. Now what we wanna do is sew up the side of the collar here. So you'll notice there's extra sticking off from where the jacket is finished. That's okay, this is gonna be our seam allowance here. So now what we wanna do is fold the right sides together, but don't lay them flush. We have a seam allowance here still that we need to flip up. So quarter inch or half, whatever you chose for your seam allowance, and then line that up with the other raw edge. And now what we're gonna do is sew up flush from the center front of the jacket. And we're gonna do this on both sides of the jacket so that way the collar ends up finished at center front. So we're sewing straight up flush with center front. And now when we go ahead and flip it right side out, you'll notice that it has a nice, clean, finished edge with center front. We can go ahead and clip our corners inside. Now you wanna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side, so that way you end up with two finished fronts of your collar. Next, what you wanna do is pin under your collar. So that seam allowance, I've pinned it down and I've folded that under. So you can see it's nice and pinned down. And then you're gonna go ahead and take your hand sewing needle and we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch this shut. It's so thick that I really worry about getting this in the sewing machine and having it look neat. So I'm just gonna slip stitch it shut. So we've finished the jacket and I'm loving it. So let's try it on. All it needs is a belt or a closure and we're ready to go. I think this jacket turned out so well. I'll definitely be scouting the thrift stores for old quilts because this is so cool. We basically just made it out of a sloper pad and then added our own little touches to it. And look at this. We've got a whole new jacket out of a quilt. Do you believe it? 
we took a quilt and made it into this cool jacket. Thanks so much for watching Sew so Anastasia today. If you have any questions or comments on the tutorial, let me know and leave them down below and I'll talk to you soon.